Trinity Western University was founded in 1962. It's a small university, about 4,000 students. I mean, there are high schools in Canada almost as big. Trinity Western isn't for everyone. It has a Christian value. You don't have to be Christian to go there. They teach regular secular subjects. It's just that the campus is Christian in its demeanor. Students are asked, for example, to make a pledge of personal conduct where they don't drink or gamble or things like that. Students take a pledge to restrict sex to the confines of a traditional marriage. So if you're looking for a party school, this ain't that. Like I say, Trinity Western has been puttering away for 50 years with no problem. But a dozen years ago, BC's radical left-wing teachers uh, uh, college tried to ban graduates from Trinity Western from being able to teach in the province. Seriously, they just banned them. Not because they weren't good teachers, but because those students had taken this personal conduct pledge while in school. It was sheer anti-Christian bigotry, and the Supreme Court of Canada said so in an 8-to-1 ruling. Slapped the bigoted teachers' college down and said, yes, in Canada, freedom of religion is still the law, even for Christians. You can look it up in the Charter of Rights, Section 2A. <laughs> well, Christian students who choose to actually live their own Christian faith can't be banned from teaching. That's the law. Well, as we've been telling you all year, there has been an uptick in anti-Christian bigotry in Canada. Of course, it's not violent like the anti-Christian mass murders in the Middle East conducted by Islamic terrorists. It's not that extreme, but it's become shockingly widespread and by people who should know better. Trinity Western is opening a law school. It's been accredited, of course, just like any other law school. They'll teach Canadian law, but it won't be an animal house environment like a lot of other law schools are. Look, so this time it's not just the anti-Christian bigots and the teachers college who are trying to discriminate against Trinity Western. It's the anti-Christian bigots in the law societies across Canada. Even though their lawyers sworn to uphold the law, even though they surely know about the Supreme Court's ruling about Trinity Western, even though they surely have read our Constitution's guarantee of freedom of religion and freedom of association, a small fringe of anti-Christian extremists have tried to blacklist Trinity Western grads in advance banning them from working as lawyers in various provinces. In some provinces, like Ontario, the bigots have actually won their votes for now until the Supreme Court slaps them down. In some provinces, the Constitution has won, like New Brunswick and B.C., although the sore losers there are still trying to ban these Christians. It's an ongoing fight. But what it's done is it's dragged Trinity Western's name through the mud. It's demonized Christians in general and students and grads of Trinity Western in particular. I blame the anti-Christian bigots in the law societies, but I also blame their repeaters in the mainstream media who hate Christians and hate the idea of a school that has Christian values. They have misrepresented Trinity Western, claiming it somehow discriminates against gays, for example. Of course, that's not true. There are gay students at Trinity Western. The word gay never appears in the student conduct code. All students are asked to keep it in their pants and follow Christian values. If you don't like that, why would you enroll there? So that's the olds. But here's the news. A graduate of Trinity Western University named Bethany Paquette applied for a job with a wilderness company called Americ. She's not a student at the school anymore. She just went there to school. She's not an official at the school. She's just, you know, that's where she studied. But when Olaf Amundsen, Americ's hiring manager, saw that Bethany was a graduate of Trinity Western, he refused her application for work right there. But that wasn't enough for him. He didn't just decline her job application with a thanks but no thanks letter. He didn't just stop after saying, you're not a good fit for us. He told her bluntly, he would never hire her or anyone else from Trinity Western. Here, take a look at his letter to her. This was published by the CBC, which is a bit of a historic moment that the CBC would actually report on anti-Christian bigotry. So one line saying she's not qualified, fine, if you can believe that. But then a whole paragraph just ranting at her. Let me quote. Additionally, considering you were involved with Trinity Western University, I should mention that unlike Trinity Western University, we embrace diversity and the right of people to sleep with or marry whoever they want. And this is reflected within some of our staff and management. In addition, the Norse background of most of the guys at the management level means that we are not a Christian organization and most of us actually see Christianity as having destroyed our culture, tradition, and way of life. Wow, what a little glimpse into Amundsen's mind that was, eh? So merely attending a school, being involved with it, means that Bethany would never be hired. Talk about prejudging someone. I mean, it's textbook discrimination based on religion. But my favorite, my favorite part is this bigot saying, unlike Trinity Western, we embrace diversity. Oh yeah, you sure do. Except for the people you hate, you foreign bigot. Did you get that? We hate you. We despise you. You and you, our kind, aren't welcome here because we embrace diversity.
Yeah, I love the part about this clown pretending to be a Viking. I mean, look at his photo. It's like he's playing dress up, like he's pretending he's back a thousand years ago. Put the photo up, please. Pretending he's back a thousand years ago, living like a Viking life instead of living in a modern Judeo-Christian world that's been the source of freedom and prosperity and tolerance for everyone, including him. It's like he's playing dress up. It's like he's one of those eccentrics who goes to a medieval carnival for the weekend, except those people are just having fun and role playing. This clown actually thinks he's a Viking instead of a middle manager at a tourism company. Bethany wrote back saying that this guy was just being anti-Christian, which of course she didn't need to say because he said it first. But look at what he says in reply. And I quote, graduates from Trinity Western University are not welcome in our Norwegian company. But of course, Americ operates in Canada. That's where they're hiring. That's where they operate. And in Canada, we believe in religious freedom for all our citizens, not just for dress up, pretend Vikings. Then he goes on and accuses her of, quote, trying to force your views onto other people. Huh? She was applying to work for an outdoors tourism company. He's the one who went crazy, fake, Viking, bizarre, cult, rant, bigot on her. Oh, let me read just one more line from this man who is writing from a company email on behalf of the company in reply to a prospective employee who says she's not welcome. They're too diverse for her. Let me quote one more line from this clown. Ready? In closing, God bless is very offensive to me, and yet another sign of your attempts to impose your religious views on me. I do not want to be blessed by some guy who is conceived by a whore outside of marriage and whom has been the very reason for the most horrendous abuses and human rights violations in the history of the human race. This is Amundsen talking. If I was to meet the guy, I'd actually F-U-C-K him. Seriously. That's what this diverse, tolerant man Olaf Amundsen wrote on behalf of Americ on Americ letterhead from an Americ corporate email to a Christian woman who was applying for a job. I kid you not. Now, lest you think this is some rogue employee, another senior manager, ch manager chimes in, agrees with just about everything his colleague said, and adds a weird line that now seems to criticize heterosexuals. I don't even get it. Here, let me just read it. Ready? We believe that a man ending up with another man is probably the best thing that could happen to him. But we do not force these views onto other people. And we are completely fine if a guy decides to go the emasculation route by marrying a BC woman. Live and let live. Okay, so they're a bit of a gay Viking outdoorsman cult. Now their homoerotic website makes a little more sense. Take a look at that. I only spent three hours on it last night. But look at the double standard here. The bizarre lack of coherence or consistency. They say live and let live. Oh, but not for Christians or those gross, gross BC women or any man who would grossly marry a gross BC woman. Look, I'm fine with a gay Viking outdoor medieval company. I actually believe in the phrase that these foreign losers keep saying, live and let live. They're the ones who, when some young girl just says, hey, can I apply for a job? They're the ones who unleash a torrent of verbal sewage of insults and epithets as offensive they can be. And they're doing all this in the name of their company, which is even more bizarre. Who's the bigot now? Who's the discriminator now? And they just kept at it. They just wouldn't shut up. They just wouldn't leave this girl alone. Arkin Borg, that's the company's vice president back in Norway, thought he'd join in and defend his company's bigotry. So weird. But really, how different is it from what the law societies in Ontario and Nova Scotia are doing? They just use slightly more lawyerly language, but their bigotry and hate is the same, a little bit less of the Viking stuff, maybe. But this has become normalized. This is how a multi-million dollar company officially communicates on purpose. They think this is normal because leading figures in our community talk this way, act this way already. It's really of a piece with what we saw in Nanaimo this spring, remember, when the city council there voted to ban all, quote, strong Christians from using the city's conference center and even canceled a Christian convention that had been scheduled and booked. Remember this? We don't want to be associated with organizations that promote homophobia or other expressions of hate. We will not accept acts of hate, and, and it's even within our Charter of Rights and Freedoms as well that hate speech is not permitted. What I would call a very strong, unbelievable Christian belief. I find this almost to be a criminal point of view in this day and age. 
Bethany has hired a lawyer and is suing Amrick in BC's Human Rights Tribunal. She's claiming they discriminated against her based on ancestry, her religion, and her political belief, which of course is true. I mean, Amrick admits it. They love it. They boast about it. They got three or four people from the company to join in on it. They wrote one line saying she didn't meet the qualifications of the job, and then letter after letter, chock full of profanity, attacking her Christianity on company letterhead. She should win. I mean, just stop for a moment and imagine that it wasn't a Christian girl who was attacked this way, who was told by a prospective employer out of the blue that he'd like to, in his words, F-U-C-K-O, say, Mohammed, and that they'd never hire a Muslim in a million years. Oh, that would be the biggest case in the history of the B.C. Human Rights Tribunal. I mean, normally I would predict that she'd lose because Christians don't win in human rights commissions because they're not objective, neutral legal systems. They're staffed deliberately by left-wing social engineers. I've seen it before. I've seen a hate speech complaint made by a Christian against someone who was saying, kill the Christians, and the Alberta Human Rights Commission explicitly said Christians can't be discriminated against. They just can't be, so they dismissed the case. Now, this is just so over the top, though. And Americ is so bigoted, it'll be amazing to see how the BC Human Rights Tribunal will be able to wriggle out of this. But I think they will. I think Bethany is wasting her time because in the game of politically correct poker, being a Christian is easily trumped by being a Norwegian Viking gay outdoorsman. I mean, easy. Now, if she was Muslim, it would be closer. I'd bet on a Muslim complainant then. Look, you know that if it were a Christian company that spoke that way to a gay Viking or to a Muslim or to anyone, the Christian company would get hammered. We've shown you a dozen cases of that over the years on the show. My point, though, is that these human rights commissions are immoral themselves. I don't think Bethany should be using them, because by using them, even against these crazy bigots at Americ, she's granting the Human Rights Tribunal the moral authority to be the arbiter of religion and politics and opinion. She's conceding that the state, that the government, has the right to interfere with private decisions like who you hire and what you can say. There is no doubt that these Americ foreigners are complete bigots, no doubt about it. But in Canada, it's not against the law to be bigoted, or at least it shouldn't be. I think this Amerit company should pay a price, but not a legal one. They should pay a social price. We should all marginalize them. We should avoid them. We should tell them how wrong and un-Canadian they are. And they should pay an economic price. We should boycott them, not give them our business, and encourage others to boycott them too. But we shouldn't take them to court, or even a kangaroo court. I think it's important that these bigots know what they've done is wrong. Not because some human rights commissar says so, but because we Canadians say so. I've set up a website to expose their bigotry to the world. I want everyone who Googles the company called Americ to find this website and learn the truth about these bigots. My website is called boycottamerick.com. Americ is A-M-A-R-U-K. Boycottamerick.com. We'll tell the story behind the bigotry. We'll put this show online. We'll ask everyone, Canadians, Norwegians, straight or gay, Christian or atheist, Canadian or Viking, to condemn this discrimination. Live and Let Live applies not just to gay Vikings, but to Christian girls from BC too. We've got a petition on the website. Maybe you want to sign it. We'll deliver it without your email address, don't worry, to the bigots at Amarok. Here, here's the petition wording. The anti-Christian bigotry of Americ's hiring practices are unacceptable and contrary to Canadian values. Canada is a tolerant country that was built on freedom of religion, including for Christians. We do not accept foreign companies like Americ bringing bigotry into our harmonious society. Until Americ apologizes for the conduct and adopts a non-discriminatory hiring policy, we will boycott Americ and encourage all other Canadians to do so as well. What do you think? Well, stay tuned. After the break, we'll speak with Bethany herself. Welcome back. I'm Ezra Levant, and Bethany Paquette joins us now from Vancouver. Bethany, welcome to the show. Tell me, how did you come to apply for a job at Americ? So basically, I was looking just for some winter employment, and Americ was one of the companies I came across, and it seemed like a really just great opportunity to expand my guiding experience, so I decided to apply. So you had experience in the outdoors. You were a guide before. I, I saw your exchange of letters with them. They said in one line, you're not qualified. And then they won, went on page after page attacking your Christianity. Do you think you weren't qualified? Have you done outdoor work like they do? Have you done it before elsewhere? 
My main experience is with raft guiding, and I've done a couple overnight trips through the company I work with. I haven't done quite as many long-term overnight trips, but at the same time, like, when applying for an internship position, like, that's the type of experience you expect to get more of. I would imagine. I mean, it sounds like you have an interest and some experience there. I think it's clear that they have a tremendous anti-Christian animus. I, I just want to show you one of the more shocking lines. I mean, I, I can't even believe this. I'm not even going to use the word on TV, but one of the people you were arguing with at the company said he hates Jesus so much. Let me put this on the screen here. I want to get this just right. He said if, uh, that if I was to meet the guy, I'd actually F-U-C-K him. Like he's so viciously anti-Christian. It's like he's going to any extreme to insult you. W you must have been shocked to have this reply from a, a, a company that you thought was reputable enough that you wanted to work for. Yeah, it was definitely uh, quite the surprise to get that one. I mean, most of the emails were pretty bad in general and just straight out attacking me. And I'd say that one was by far the worst. No, I mean, I, I read your exchange. I mean, he, so to speak, started it. He said you were involved with Trinity Western you're a bunch of bigots, we're diverse. I guess they're not diverse enough to have a, a Christian there. So I, what do you make of the fact that in all their letters, Amarok says they're so diverse and they're so tolerant, but you're not allowed to work there, and they call you about as every single name I've heard and a bunch of new ones I hadn't heard before. Do you think that in their own mind they're tolerant, or do you think they are... I mean, they come across as if they truly think... They're open-minded, diverse, and tolerant. But I've never seen such viciousness in my life from a company. I've seen it from, you know, individual people, but from a multi-million dollar company, I've just never seen this before. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what was going through their mind. I'm not sure, like, how they treat other people, but I know the way they treated me was pretty outrageous and not something I want other Christians to have to go through at all. Now, I saw your complaint to the B.C. Human Rights Tribunal, and I saw that you're complaining based on religious belief and, and place of origin and political belief. And I have to say, if you were a Muslim or maybe a Jew or a Sikh or a Hindu or something like that, you would probably win. I mean, I have just never seen such viciousness from an employer before. But you're a Christian from Trinity Western University, which has been demonized in the mainstream press. And I know a little bit about the B.C. Human Rights Tribunal. They are politically correct. They don't have much time for Christians. Do you really think you have a chance, or are you doing it to make some sort of point? Why are you going into a politically correct process like the Human Rights Tribunal? So I'm going to the Human Rights Tribunal because what happened to me was really wrong. And, I mean, I'm a Christian, I went to Trinity, and I don't want other grads, other Christians, or even other people in different religions to have to go through anything similar to this, whether it's with this company or other companies. And so even if I'm going to have a hard time going forward, I'm still going to go forward. You know, I, I think you're right that this is, you know, this is about a precedent. Uh, what's incredible to me is how normalized anti-Christian bigotry has become. I'm not just talking about the violence we see overseas with Christians being beheaded. Thank God that doesn't happen here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the soft bigotry that people feel free to insult Christians in a way that they would never insult a Sikh, a Hindu, a Jew, a Muslim. Just that kind of viciousness. It would be unthinkable that if a Jew said, well, I went to such and such Hebrew school, that they would just be attacked in that way. Or who knows, maybe not with Israel in the news these days. Do you think anti-Christian bigotry has become normalized in British Columbia? It would seem like it's becoming quite common, and I know I've definitely faced a lot of it. I mean, nothing to the extent of what I faced with Emmerich, but I've definitely seen a lot of it and heard a lot from others about it. Well, Bethany, I, I wish you good luck in some ways. I don't support human rights commissions myself, but it'll be interesting to see how they handle this. Can I keep in touch with you in the weeks and months ahead? I want to see how this story plays out. I think you're not alone in this. I think other Christians have been attacked and discriminated against in this way. And maybe by having you on the show, others will stand forward, step up, and, and maybe we'll have a bit of a fight back. Can I call on you again in the future to talk? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Bethany. I appreciate you joining us.